and the shit, and I mean that literally, he's a robot. But to amp up how dead fucking serious Tails is committed to this mission, his default weapons are bombs. And there's more than one class. Small explosives, timed explosives, large explosives, fucking napalm! Where was this Tails in the adventure games? Well, speaking of adventure, and I know it's in the title of the game, but it's indicative of what you're doing here. It's not really a high-speed 2D platformer. No, Tails isn't packing any speed here unless you get the running shoes because Tails needs an item to help him go fast in this game, and even then it's not much faster than his default haters got to hate walk. Tails can't even spin dash without getting an appropriate item for some reason, and that's the fastest you're going to get in Tails Adventure because it's exactly that, an adventure game. Pretty close to Metroidvania, there are no goalposts to run past, a lot of areas are interconnected, there's no special stages to unlock, Robotnik is once again absent. The point of Tales Adventure is to carefully explore your surroundings, destroy the battle cuckoo, and use your upgrades to continue your quest, be it by land, sea, or air, and so you lay waste to the Grand Commander of the Army. There's rings to collect, but Tails has a traditional health meter. You can refill it by grabbing more rings, which I recommend you do, as some of these bastards are kind of annoying to hit. But for everything else, you can simply fly over them. Thankfully, between games, Tails has regained the use of his legs and won't die of cardiac arrest by touching a wall, but you still have a flight meter to keep an eye on. Chaos Emeralds hidden throughout the island can be collected to permanently increase both your health and flight. That's a concept I totally dig. You may not get a super form for collecting all six, but Tails is wise enough to get use out of them individually. Take some notes, you blue fuckboy. The Emeralds are completely optional, though, not needed for a better ending, but get them anyway, who doesn't like extra health? You start with bombs, and you'll be getting a lot of mileage out of them, because unlike the platformer, Sales can't solve his problems by jumping on shit. Everything must be handled with a specific tool, from different types of bombs, defensive shields, to that remote robot I mentioned earlier, but not every item has equal utility. The helmet makes you impervious to attack, but you can't move. The knuckles item is a pathetically short-range punch that's awkward to hit with, and there's some I'm not even sure what function they serve without looking it up at a wiki. And some items are merely situational, one-use tools, like the night scope. Use it to see inside this volcano. Nothing more to it than that. And I guess because Tails needs the constant noise, he also has a portable radio. Oh, I'm sorry, he has a portable radio. The island is home to several locations, some of which require specific items to fully see, which ends up unlocking more areas in the process, until you get to the point where you can take the battle to the Battle Cuckoo's Fortress. No area is super large, but it still requires some basic back and forth, though the island is certainly not lacking in visual diversity. Nothing is too taxing, not even a handful of dungeons. I love how this game makes Tails look like a total badass using the one asset he's known for, his high intellect. I enjoy that sort of design, especially when the game in question is actually decent, and this one is not bad at all. Tails Adventure pleasantly surprised me when I first played it, which wasn't that long ago. I volunteered to play the game for the Sonicathon I participated in a couple of years ago without ever really playing it. I'm sort of stupid like that. But I picked up the game, and yeah, I realize it wasn't a classic Sonic title, but it's still a remarkably solid game. It's an adventure game. I'm okay with the slow pace, and it's not even that slow. It's around a three-hour game that's easy to pick up and understand. It's got enemies to blow up, bosses to destroy, a healthy amount of puzzle solving to keep your brain ticking. If it were a little longer, and if a large number of upgrades had been put to better use, I think we could have had something really good here. As is, Tales Adventure is a fun little romp at its best, completely harmless at its worst. It's weird to think that this is one of the better Game Gear Sonic games, spin-off or otherwise. I'd love to see this formula attempted again on a bigger scale that's not named Shattered Crystal. A Sonic the Hedgehog-themed Metroidvania starring Tails and his gadgets? I'd buy that, why not? The sky's the limit, and Tails is already close to breaking that limit if this game is anything to go by. Raiding the Battle Cuckoo's Fortress with a single battle plane, infiltrating the base with nothing but a spin dash and a robot dog, and laying waste to the Imperial fleet, bringing the place down on a glorious blaze, and what does Tails do afterwards? Doing what he does best, building shit. Though if you ask me, I think this would have been a more appropriate ending. Wow. Sequel and are not connected, they are completely separated with a bona fide start and conclusion. It's more about the platforming in Hatch Hero, the kind of jumps you can make, the kind of obstacles you overcome, your effectiveness in dealing with enemies, with no real puzzle solving of any nature. And on one hand, I'm glad this is something Hatch Hero remains consistent with from the get-go, instead of yanking my chain of Risky's revenge. On the other hand, dungeons have been a staple since the original game, and to see them completely omitted here, it feels odd. The stages are pretty fun, it doesn't break new ground in anything, at least within the Shantae series. It still has that great sense of energy, the soundtrack contributing to that factor, I can assure you that. I want to dance my ass off the some of these tunes. But I wouldn't say the game is as kinetic as Pirate's Curse. In fact, I'll just go and say now, I still think Pirate's Curse is the better game. And my major reasoning is reason number four for the Risk User Revenge comparison. There's not much here content-wise. Compared to Pirate's Curse, I should stress that. Let me elaborate. Half Genie Hero is and feels like a bigger game than Risky's Revenge, hence Risky's Revenge 2.0, which I think is important. But the minimalistic story
story with plot threads that go absolutely nowhere or feel underdeveloped, the below average difficulty, only five major areas that lack dungeons, which leads to an enormous amount of backtracking while hunting for collectibles and upgrades, Half Genie Hero, I honestly feel, is a step backwards in content compared to Pirate's Curse borderline incomplete in small portions. I'm talking primarily about the base game, the content you're paying 20 bucks for up front. If we're being technical, extremely technical, Half Genie Hero is an incomplete game because additional content like Risky Mo, which supposedly plays like Pirate's Curse, along with extra costumes and other things have yet to be released. As a backer of this game, I can look forward to this future content free of charge, and I really can't wait for Risky Mode. But late adopters not only have to pay the base price, but also additional money for later content. I was initially hesitant to review this game because of that, because I knew more was on the way. I wanted to see if Half Genie Hero would eventually become worth its asking price. But then I thought of other crowdfunded projects like Shovel Knight, which I reviewed before the Free Plague of Shadows expansion, and way before the Spectre Knight expansion. And I did that because on its own, I thought Shovel Knight was very much worth it. And don't get me wrong, Half Genie Hero is fine. It's not a bad game at all. It looks and sounds great, very accessible to new players. I see no problem starting this series with this title. Indeed, on the Shantae Totem Pole, this ranks below Pirate's Curse, but above Risky's Revenge in the original Shantae. When accounting for the many other great games out there that cost less, I just don't think it's worth 20 bucks right now until later down the road when maybe all the DLC is released and we get a half genie hero director's cut. I not only think Pirate's Curse is still the better game, that's also cheaper too, currently on sale for 10 bucks at the time of this video. But you know what though? I gotta give props to WayForward for a successful Kickstarter campaign. Communication was abundant, the updates were always a treat to see in my inbox, I really felt as an investor of this product. I was satisfied with the creation process, and though the end result may be a bit lacking for me, it's a structurally sound, bright and colorful, and most importantly, stable video game. And as a backer, I know there's more to look forward to down the road, and I don't have to pay a single goddamn penny for it. You do, though, if you didn't back it, but that's why I say wait for a price drop. Comp said this is the only time I'll openly rip you, I swear. Take some fucking notes. And same for you, Koji Igarashi, though I still have high hopes for blood saying I'm not even gonna fucking pretend I'm not looking forward to that. And there we go. Half GD Hero is good. Just not at its full potential yet. Definitely something I plan on revisiting later when everything for it is released. I should also head back to Shovel Knight when all the DLC for that game is released too. Something to look forward to. I seriously need to start considering revamping my old then and now concept. Well, that's the end of 2016 for this channel. 2017 begins with the rest of the Sonic handheld marathon. And the next video is not the advanced series. No, a lot of you are waiting for me to just jump into those. But I like to look at the next game as a sort of precursor to those games. What I mean we'll find out in the next video. With all that said, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic new year and take care. Out of complete fucking happenstance, I found out you could jump off the explosions the bombs give off when they hit the ground. Now you tell me. How the fuck does that make any sense? Did Sonic swallow a fire shield, naturally inheriting its powers? Of course he fucking didn't. There aren't any elemental shields in this game at all. Though for some reason, this game loves Sonic 3's soundtrack. Just about every track is an epic recreation of some of my favorite Sonic tunes of all time. It's good to my ears, but this makes no sense. Sonic's many things. He ain't fucking fireproof. Pocket Adventure is easily beatable in under an hour. It doesn't reuse every zone from Sonic 2, just a handful of them. But they still rock the same number of alternate pathways and power-ups like speed shoes and shields, like you would expect from the Genesis Classic. And for some added replayability, there's puzzle pieces hidden throughout every stage you can collect to build some puzzles in your collection, a minor addition, but something you completionists can sink your teeth in, I guess. If you want to easily double your playtime, go after those Chaos Emeralds, because if Dimps is known for a lot of things in Sonic the Hedgehog design, making the Emeralds fucking impossible to obtain is certainly one of the more infamous tropes, and Pocket Adventure is no fucking exception. Pocket Adventure has two acts per zone, but you can only get the Emerald at the end of Act 1, jumping into this giant ring at the end of the stage like you do with Sonic 1. Getting to the special stage is not the problem. It's this shit. Yep, that goddamn halfpipe is back, and I know this is more of a me problem, I fucking suck at the halfpipe shit. And by the 5th and 6th Emerald, it's like pulling teeth with how sensitive this control is. The biggest problem, however, is the limited number of attempts you get at collecting the Emeralds. Ironically, it's not like Sonic 2 where you have multiple checkpoints you can cross within a stage to keep trying. There's six Chaos Emeralds to collect in Pocket Adventure via special stages, and you get exactly six attempts. Mess up one time and kiss that perfect ending goodbye. Reload that save file and try again. The seventh Emerald is tied to the plot, where you get it from Knuckles, Robotnik steals it, Knuckles fucking uppercuts you to the sky to help chase the fat man down, and you get it back by beating Robotnik's final contraption the right way. But this game also has a doomsday zone of the sort, it's just not as epic. The boss isn't nearly as tense, and the background music is not the adrenaline-filled doomsday zone, but the...
calm and relaxing sky sanctuary. Somebody fucked up there. Given the amount of pain you'll suffer to grab the air molds off for an exclusive stage is not as climactic as it could have been with no way to utilize supersonic in the regular game, it's a total bummer this is all you get to show for it, and just a spoiler warning, this isn't the only time I'll be saying that shit. So don't feel too bad if you can't get all the air molds by the end of the game. The normal ending is by no means dour, you know, just like Sonic 2. In fact, I think it's best to look at Sonic Pocket Adventure as Sonic 2... Remixed? Sonic 2 Light? Diet Sonic 2? One of those. You can kind of look at it as a transitional game as well, the moment Sonic stepped away from his classic upbringings into his more modern aesthetics. Just look at Sonic here, he's got his classic proportions, but he's got the green eyes. Not a bad compromise if you ask me, I like this sprite. Dr. Robotnik begins the game with his classic look, but by the end of it, he's made his change to his iconic adventure design. We're seeing the transformation unfold mm -hmm. under our very eyes. Mm -hmm. Sonic Pocket Adventure, at the time, can be seen as one final hurrah to Sonic's classic days, because after this, it's strictly long spines, green eyes, and noodle limbs. I doubt it's easy to come by a Neo Geo Pocket Color nowadays. I used an emulator for this video, but bought myself a physical version of Sonic Pocket Adventure, so I wouldn't feel too bad. Though Sega ain't seeing any profit from this shit anymore. As a consequence, I couldn't show off the competitive multiplayer. I think it's set up like Sonic 2's multiplayer, so we're not missing much, I think. It's also the only way you can play as Tails. Without that, it's strictly the Sonic show. At the end of the day, Sonic Pocket Adventure, for as much as it borrows from Sonic 2, is still a solid title in its own accord. Good control, colorful graphics, nice sound, interesting boss fights. For the definitive Sonic 2 experience, I'd recommend mm -hmm. Sonic 2. But Pocket Adventure isn't bad at all. It will ultimately lay the foundation for some of Sonic's most well-known handheld adventures coming up. And next time, I'll be looking at those games all at once. It's finally time for the Sonic Advance Trilogy video. And before you ask, Sonic Battle will come at a later date. With that said, if you're heading by MAGFest this coming weekend, stop on by and maybe, just maybe, you might be a part of that Sonic Advance Trilogy video. More details to come if you happen to be there. With all that said once more, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. And take care.